Welcome back to Camp Out West. If you're new here, we're John and Emily, and we sold our home and everything we own to buy this abandoned caravan park in West Wales. We moved onto the land in our 20-year-old caravan with our dog Maggie. We've been working hard alongside our full-time jobs to bring the land back to life with a dream to self-build our mortgage-free home and guest campsite. A special thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So if you watch our last video, you'd have seen us sheath in the top of the building. So today's plan is we're gonna get a waterproof membrane on so we can get it watertight, get some battens on, and then we're gonna fit our first Velux window. So as well as putting on a waterproof membrane similar to this stuff, but it's in a bright red, uh, we're also fitting these. These are called eaves trays. So these will go all along the side of the roof the full length and these are kind of a pre-formed piece of PVC plastic and these will just allow all the rainwater to run straight into the gutters and it kind of protects the sides of the trusses a little bit more. First I sealed up all the seams in our OSB roofing boards to get it air and water tight. Then I attached our eaves trays to the edge of the roof. Then it was time to add our red waterproof membrane to protect the roof. And it was time to add the battens to hold it all in place. First side complete, it was time to start work on the back side of the roof. First job was cutting out where our Velux window was going to go.
This was so satisfying to see how much light it was going to add to the cabin. Next it was time to add the waterproof membrane. While John was doing the roof, I spent some time in the garden with Maggie. So it's Sunday afternoon and I've come down to my greenhouse to spend a few hours to get on top of everything I want to plant this June. I'm also going to get ready to remove a lot of my smaller plants. So in here I've got three tomatoes and they're doing amazing. So I just need to split them up and move them into bigger pots. So I'm excited to see what I can get done. Also look at my aubergines. I actually can't believe I'm growing my own aubergines in Wales. I'm so excited. I'm also going to repot my loofah plants. I have got two, four, six, eight, ten in this tray alone and I've got three more trays so I think in total I've got 24 loofah plants and um, when I was doing my research I read that these were one of the hardest ones to germinate so I did loads of seeds and nearly all of them germinated so we're going to be overrun with sponges so if there's anyone local to me that really wants to grow some loofah plants please let me know um, because I have way too many <laughs> So that is all 24 loofah plants repotted into their bigger pots. No idea where I'm going to put them now because these things grow absolutely massive. But I guess one thing I won't have to worry about is running out of sponges. Hello. Oh, you want a snack? You want a snacky? Okay, sit. Sit. She doesn't want to sit on the step. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Ready? Touch. Touch. <laughs> Touch. Touch. You can do it. Good 
go. <laughs> My first strawberries have started to come out. Look how cute. I also planted my remaining strawberries into this hanging bag yesterday. It's my first time using one like this. I thought it was a really good space saver for our tiny greenhouse, so I'm excited to see it fruit and how it looks in the hanging bag. Another thing that's doing really well is my ginger. I planted this last month, and as you can see, it's already starting to sprout. So next ones to repot is our Crown Prince squashes. We had two weddings this week, so we were away for about four days because we had a lot of traveling in between the weddings. And um, these have really struggled. We've got some leaves going yellow, so these desperately need to go into bigger pots now. These have massively outgrown their tiny plug tray, so they are ready to be repotted. And this is the vegetable I'm most excited about growing this year. This is our courgette plant. We had one last year and it didn't fruit at all and we realized we needed to pollinate it ourselves. Um, so I'm just gonna make sure I go around and do it on these plants up here so we can get as much fruit as possible. So on your courgette plants, you have the male and the female and that's the one that fruits. So by pollinating it yourself, you're just giving it the best chance of having a good harvest. So I'm just using a cotton bud or you can use a paintbrush or something similar and I'm popping it into the flower to collect some pollen. It's easy to do this first thing in the morning as well when the flowers open. So I've collected my pollen and then you're just going to pop it into the female flower. But as you can see, we've got a lot of fruit coming. I think we're going to be overrun with courgettes because nearly all of them have got courgettes growing. It's exciting. Hey, look. There's loads. So now I'm done in the greenhouse. I'm going to go and harvest my garlic because it's finally ready. So this is my first ever attempt at growing garlic and I'm so excited to get these out of the ground. They had a pretty tough season. They did get rust, which is these little red dots all over the leaves that does stunt the bulbs growth. So I'm not expecting them to be really big. Um, but one really cool thing is we've got these garlic scapes. These are meant to be delicious. So I'm excited to try these as well. Mm. My first garlic harvest. Oh, wow. That's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. <laughs> They smell incredible. Yeah, yeah, it smells really nice. Okay, it's one. I thought maybe they need to like dry out a bit. Can't remember how many are planted to be honest. Hope we get like a monster. Two. The soil is so compacted. I guess they've been in since November. Aww, it's tiny. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> Can you smell them? So that's my first garlic harvest complete. I wish you could smell them right now because they smell incredible. So next up, I need to clean them and get them ready to hang in the greenhouse to dry. And before I do that, I just want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, Squarespace. If you're new to Squarespace, they are an all-in-one website platform that make it easy for anyone to be able to create professional and modern websites no matter your web design ability. If you're creative like us or an entrepreneur and you want to start your own online store, or you need your own booking platform or portfolio, Squarespace is the perfect platform to showcase any project or business. We have a number of Squarespace websites which we're currently working on. From our wedding photography business, The Wild Bride, which we use as an online portfolio and booking platform. And we are also working on our Camp Out West online store. We love the amazing selection of ready-to-use website templates already available within our Squarespace account, which meet the different requirements of each of our businesses' website needs. We love how easy we can customise every design detail with their easy to use, a drag and drop technology, which works on both desktop or mobile, 
allowing us to create multiple websites with ease, thanks to the next generation website design system, Fluid Engine. They have some amazing built-in features from their online store functionality, which allows us to upload our products and get them ready to sell to people from all over the world in just a few clicks, to being able to accept appointments, which comes in handy when booking in calls with our future wild bride couples. If you've ever dreamt of starting your own business or brand, or you're creative and want to elevate your online presence with a new portfolio, just head to squarespace.com forward slash campoutwest for a free trial and get 10% off your first website purchase or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So now the roof is fully waterproof. We're gonna cut a big hole in it, make it not waterproof for a little bit longer. And we're gonna fit our first window in the cabin and that's gonna be our V-Lux skylight. We tried lifting the window in a handful of times, but couldn't quite work it out. Luckily our friend Barnabas came to help fit the window on the flashing kit, as he'd done a few before. He's also a tree surgeon, so he's very comfortable at working high, which came in very handy. So that's the Velux window fully fitted and finished. Really happy with how it's turned out. We've taken you know, a long time to get this place waterproof, so to cut a big hole in it, uh, for the window was pretty stressful but really happy with how it's turned out our maths were correct and yeah it's all nice and snug so big thank you to barnabas for coming and helping us with the window 100 percent we couldn't have done it without you so big thanks to barnabas so that's the end of today's video um, got a lot of exciting stuff coming up we've actually just ordered all the cladding for the walls and the roof of the cabin so that's going to be getting made uh, i think there's a couple of weeks wait until that's delivered to site and before that arrives, we've got one, two, three, we've got four windows to install in the cabin. So that's going to be the next job. But also, we went on a beekeeping course last weekend up in the Brecon Beacons. So we'll be showing that in the next video. So stick around if you want to see that. But um, we'll see you next time. Anything you'd like to say, Maggie? <laughs> Oi! Are you happy with the progress? Are you happy with the progress? Are you happy? Have you got anything to say? <laughs> Sophie, you're so cute. <laughs> She's going like cross eyed looking at it. <sighs> hey, it's not for you. It's not for you. <laughs> What's here? Maggie, come.